I'm Shanti with Bamboo Leaf Tea and This Bamboo Life. And I'm so excited to be a part of Hearts Garden Celebration. It's ninth annual one. And we are here today at my farm to talk about bamboos, my favorite subject. So we are going to start with talking about planting bamboos in Central Florida, but I really want to emphasize there are somewhere around 1700 bamboos known right now and so when we're talking about bamboos and really when we're talking about plants we're talking about right plant right place and this is so important when we talk about any plants especially for growing food and timing and things like this because I think a lot of people get really frustrated with what their plants are doing and it's because they haven't chosen the plant that really does well in the space that they're at. We're also going to talk about uses in the landscape, functional uses, which are so important. And then we're going to talk about things that you can do with your bamboo. What can you use your bamboo for? Because most people don't know that it also is a perennial vegetable that you can use to eat and you can use medicinally. So let's get started. Okay, I'm gonna highlight a couple more plants that you can think about for your Central Florida garden. One over here is Toldoides, and this one over here is Old Hami. Now these are both very upright plants. So they're both get to about that 30 to 40 foot range, but they don't take up a very big width as far as their footprint, which can be almost more important than the height. They don't look really great when they're hedged, but they're just a beautiful specimen. And um, like all bamboos, they have a very good edible shoot, especially old Hami and Tildoides. What I like about these guys is you can get this kind of filtered look that you see with the running bamboos that you don't, you can't really create the same way with something like this, which is your graceful bamboo over here. So this is like that dense and impenetrable hedge, like a sea breeze, a graceful, something like that. Whereas this, you can use almost like a filter, which gives you a completely different look. And it's a really beautiful effect when you have it in a forest type setting. Um, so I like to use it in that way. The one thing about the more upright ones to be aware of is if you're in areas where you're more prone to wind damage, these guys, you're gonna see more leaners. And when I say leaners, they're things that kind of fall over in, in, in different um, storms and things like that. So that is one thing to be aware of. Typically the bigger, chunkier ones, the root system is a little bit different. It's a little more open structured. And so they're not quite as rooted into the ground. And so you'll get more damage. Whereas the smaller ones, you have less damage. So I'll give you an example. I'm gonna take you over and show you fern leaf. Now fern leaf was one when I originally bought my farm, I had a trailer not even strapped down and that trailer was surrounded by fern leaf. Now, when I had a hurricane come directly over my house, the trailer never budged. I had damage to all the other buildings on site and that one never moved at all because it was this, it just like couldn't go either way. So smaller is better often on those things. And fern leaf is one of my smallest tropical clumping plants that we'll use in Central Florida. It's a multiplex variety. This one can be hedged to any size. What I love about fern leaf is the versatility of it. Now, if you've ever been to Costa Rica or Central America, they will use this plant everywhere along embankments for that soil erosion, which is so important if you have any kind of slopes at all, because the root system on this is absolutely massive. Now it's not, root systems on bamboo are only within that first foot and a half, but it is a solid root system. So that is that holding of that mat, holding that embankment up. And then if you partner that with trees that go down, you've got that structural system that will go and hold the, the hillside up. Now in Florida, we don't deal with that a lot, but it does come up here and there, especially if you've got some waterways with embankments, this is your girl. Now she can be hedged 
I've seen them hedged to about this high, like little, like in Costa Rica, you know, where, where you have like, or in Asia where they do um, topiary type things. They just hedge them really short. So it can be hedged to any shape or size. Max height on this guy is about 14 feet. So it's not a big bamboo. It can fit into a lot of areas and it can be utilized in that way. And really in tropical and in shade and in sunlight. The thing I like about fern leaf that I like to highlight to people is I also grow a grass named vetiver. Vetiver is typically used for a lot of soil erosion, but vetiver in a, in a more moist area like we have in Florida where we're getting more waterfall doesn't form as massive a root system. It just doesn't have to, whereas fern leaf does. And if you're wanting to do that embankment along a waterway, um, <laughs> if you're wanting to do that embankment along the waterway, this one is better because it does better in the shade, whereas vetiver is going to be a smaller root system in the shade because it's a real true grass. Now these guys are all grasses, but these guys are what are considered forest grasses. So they're really fungal dominant forest grasses that love to live on the edge in the understory. We can grow them in the full sun, but they love the understory. We're gonna talk a little bit about bamboo shoots because I wanna emphasize that when you plant a bamboo, you're not just planting it for all these functional reasons that we talked about. You can also eat it and use it as medicine. This is tropical blue, which is blue chungi, and we're at the end of the fruit of the shooting season at this point, but this one still has a shoot coming up, and so I'll give you an idea of what it looks like. It kind of looks like asparagus, <laughs> some people say. Um, and these shoots are edible. Now, people get confused because there is a toxin in bamboo called cyanic glycosides. Um, this is a bitter sugar that's in a lot of different plants and it's prevalent in bamboo. It is concentrated in the bamboo shoots. The thing about this toxin is that it's heat dissipated. So the way that you process these bamboo shoots is <clears throat> to boil them and cook them for about 45 minutes in a salt water solution. Sometimes I'll use, I'll put a little charcoal or something that draws it out and then you can use them in all different ways. So you can ferment them, you can pickle them, you can use them in, in stir fries, you can use them in soups, you can use them in, in a lot of different ways. They don't have a lot of flavor. Think kind of like tofu where they take on the flavor of whatever is in it, but they pack a huge amount of medicinal properties. So one of the ways that you can keep your bamboo in check is by eating it. And it's giving you this mineral rich, you know, vitamin rich, food that is available to you right here in your yard. So when we talk about bamboo shoots, I get this question a lot. What is the best one to use for bamboo shoots? And the, the thing is, is that they're all good for bamboo shoots. Um, some are sweeter, some have more of those cyanoglycosides, which are more bitter, and um, some are bigger, some are smaller. So when we talk about using bamboo shoots, if they're smaller, you kind of get less for your effort, right? Um, if they're sweeter, you don't have to cook them as long. One of the most popular ones to use is old hami, which are these big guys here because they're big, they're hardy to 20 degrees. And again, I'm talking about central Florida um, and Florida in general. So with 20 degrees, you can go all the way up into North Florida with these guys. They have a great timber, they have a great shoot, and they're a nice chunky shoot, so they get pretty big. If you're moving down into South Florida, you've got a lot of other options in the Dendrocalamus zone, like Dendrocalamus asper, Dendrocalamus, um, the other big ones that are down there, Giganteus and things like that. Asper is the one that's really great for shoots, but all of them, I wanna emphasize that all of them can be used. It's just a matter of how much you have to cook them to get that bitterness out. I will put in a little bit of a plug for these runners is that oftentimes with the runners, 
a lot of them you don't have to cook at all which is amazing so that's a that is a plus on that side and again they don't do as great down here but if you're in georgia north florida going up into that southeast area and even up along the east coast and up into colder reg regions know that those shoots are really really good and oftentimes you don't have to cook them or cook them barely at all in order to use them which is a huge benefit so when we're talking about bamboo shoots we're talking about that you know the ability of bamboo to absorb all the minerals and all the nutrients in its environment and offer that back to you and that's what the bamboo shoots have so high in silica they have zinc iron magnesium manganese all the minerals are in there some plants like a tomato plant or your vegetable plants they can absorb about 50 to 60 70 percent maybe at the max of what's nutrient available in the soil bamboo has the ability to absorb 100 percent and it does that through these fungal and bacterial relationships specifically the fungal relationships that it forms in the soil so if you want to encourage your bamboo to have more food so that it's available to you the way that you make it more mineral dense is by adding mulch to your bamboos because these guys are woodlands creatures right they want to grow in that community of woods and and being around trees as an understory plant they are a grass but they are fungal dominant so that's really important to know when you're growing how to get the maximum amount of food from your bamboo now the other thing that you can use your bamboo for which is super easy is tea and that's a great thing to do and this can be done just simply by using the leaves graceful is a great one for it all of them are amazing there isn't a tea a plant that i wouldn't use out there and when we're talking about the cyanic glycosides they're pretty much non-existent in the leaves that i've found they may be more a little bit in some of the tropicals but when you're making tea your heat dissipating anyway so i've never had any issue i've made teas from probably a hundred different varieties of bamboos at this point and never had a problem with any bitterness, any cyanic glycosides being present from Dendrocalamus asper all the way to fern leaf. Now, if I take those 100 teas, I'm going to get a light yellow all the way to a dark brown, which is kind of cool because there's a lot of different flavors going on, right? But the easiest way to do that is just to simply take the leaves and boil them in the water. Now, if you're not a tea drinker, you can also use the leaves in a variety of different ways. You can add them in like you would like a bay leaf or something like that, like an herb to soups, to uh, rice, to anything that you're cooking for dinner, you can add them in and you're getting that high silica content. You're getting a lot of the water soluble elements that are available in these leaves. And that's a huge medicinal property. Silica alone is really important. It's something that we have when we're babies, a lot of it. It's that flexibility and strength and being able to like put your leg around your neck and things like that, that you see with babies, they can kind of stretch all over the place. As we get older, we get more brittle. And so the thing about adding silica into your life is it's adding that strength and flexibility. And when you look at a bamboo, that is exactly what you see. You see that strength and flexibility. It's doing that to all the cells of your body. So it's doing that to your cardiovascular system. It's expanding those arteries and capillaries and allowing them to stretch and be more flexible and yet be really strong. It's connective tissues. It's increasing bone density because it's also partnered with magnesium and manganese, which are really important and calcium for building that bone density. So think osteoporosis. It's helping with arthritis and any joints or connective tissues because it's strengthening those connective tissues. It's strengthening bones. So silica is something that bamboo is giving all the time. It's giving it to us, it's giving it to the soil, it's giving it to other plants. And it's really, it's a, it's a mineral that's super important that we don't get very much of in a lot of different ways, but it's something that bamboo is able to give us. So if you're just growing it for that alone, 
that's an excellent reason. It also makes your hair grow like crazy. So if you are having issues with your hair, um, you want to start with this. So we're going to talk a little bit about companion planting because I think it's important to know what you can grow with bamboo. And when we're talking about this, we're talking about a plant is ever evolving, right? Your garden is something that is not a stationary thing. It's not like a house where you build it and that is the footprint forever. A garden is, it's an interactive, uh, performance art that you're also eating, right? Hopefully you're eating it and you're enjoying it and you're, and you're immersing in it. And so when we're talking about planting with bamboo, if you're talking about the beginning, when you're in the first few years, you're talking about things that almost anything can go right up next to a bamboo. But if you're talking about down the road, um, bamboo is going to weed out a lot, most of the stuff. I find it interesting as to what will grow in there. So some of the things that will grow in a mature grove, um, on top of it, I do seminal pumpkins as far as edibles. I'll do beans, they'll grow up it. I'll do yams in a pot that will grow up it too. Things that'll use that sun on the outside of the groves and grow up the bamboo and then utilizing them in a way that also is helping with the bamboo. So the yams are gonna compete with the, the roots of the bamboo, but I can grow them in pots and that works out well. The beans don't care. They'll grow straight up and they'll grow all over the place, right? And the seminal pumpkins really don't care either. So those are three things, which is kind of fun because it really reminisces back to like, if you know about the three sisters, corn, bean, and squash, except I'm switching out the corn for the bamboo, right? Because we're in a tropical area. So I like to emphasize the edible parts. Now, if you're in a really tropical area, you could grow vanilla up uh, bamboo. So think of things that will utilize the bamboo that don't need a lot of soil. If you're looking for something more ornamental, you could do something like a wagellia. You could do a kind of a ground cover that sits across the top, bromeliads, things like that. So those are some of the ideas. Now, when we're starting out at the beginning and on these smaller bamboos, I can often plant things right up against them. And I like to do, you know, things that go down in conjunction because bamboo is doing that horizontal. It's taking up that first foot and a half and so if you plant things that go down, oftentimes those things will do really well. Think on the edible range, you're thinking hibiscus, think um, catli guavas, think any kind of fruit tree that's gonna have a deep root system. Um, moringas at the beginning. Those are all things that are helping and working in conjunction with the bamboo and they're feeding back and forth. We know that plants communicate with each other through the mycelial no network and that they're sharing resources. Now this may not go on forever, but it'll go on at the beginning. Eventually they're gonna weed out a lot of stuff and there won't be a lot of stuff if you have multiple bamboos put together. And that can be its own benefit because it's an area that you don't have to maintain. And as we all know, we have a lot of things going on in our life. And so if you have an area that needs less maintenance, it's something that you can utilize for your food and medicine without having to do a lot of work. So let's talk a little bit about, I have bamboo, what do I actually do with it, right? what can I use my bamboo for? Because honestly, I just thought it was a plant that was growing in my backyard. You know, I bought this house, it had some bamboo. I planted some bamboo because I didn't want my neighbors to look at my pool, whatever, right? You have a lot of different reasons why you might have access, or maybe you're learning about the medicinal aspects and you're like, I really want that, but I don't have room for bamboo, but my neighbor has some, so maybe I can utilize theirs. So let's talk about it, right? We talked a little bit about tea, and that is a really great place to start, right? Because with that, you only need leaves and most people have access somewhere in their life to bamboo. So utilizing the leaves, making tea from it, that's a great way to get that silica. Silica is a water soluble element. Get that silica into your body, start nourishing your body with mineral rich. We all know that our food is depleted in minerals and this is a great mineral sink that you can easily add back into your system right so that's a great place to start you can also use that tea for a hair rinse you can topically use it on your skin your hair all different parts you can put it in your bath you can use it to 
feed that external feed your insides from your outsides that's two different ways you can do it you can start with the interior or you can start with the exterior and both of them are going to really help so those are two different ways that you can use the leaves you can also cook in a bamboo leaf there is a sticky rice recipe that you can cook inside of a bamboo leaf um, there's some videos of it online and that's a really fun way to do we can also utilize the calms of the bamboo to cook inside of now these calms have a solid node in between here with this is all hollow in between so it's like a it's like an container and what you can do is you can utilize this to actually cook in think of it as like a pot except that you are absorbing all those mineral rich nutrients from the bamboo into the food that you're cooking you can do this on a grill you can do this on a stovetop using a pot of boiling water which is actually the easiest way to do it and you simply do that by cutting here and cutting here and this is a hollow tube that you can fill up with vegetables or rice or anything that you want to put in there. You can put meat in there. You can put just vegetables and then capping the top with something. Now, if you're not in a tropical area, you could use something like a cabbage. Here we have lots of bananas. So I use banana leaves to shove into the top of it. And that's adding that cork, which is keeping all the moisture in. It's just another way. I mean, if you're out camping and then you can use it on the fire afterwards, right? So it all goes back into the system. It's completely biodegradable and it's just really fun. You can make tea in these things. So you can heat this over, you can put the tea inside of it, and then that's absorbing, again, getting those nutrients out of the bamboo and putting it into your tea and drinking your tea that way, which is kind of fun. So playing around with using the bamboo that you have, using bamboo that you have access to, um, using bamboo that maybe is down the street that you could go knock on your neighbor's door and be like, hey, do you mind if I cut some bamboo? And most people, they're like, yes, please take it all, right? So the difference between a plant and a weed is knowledge. And if you know that you have all of this medicine and food sitting in this plant, all of a sudden you don't have enough of it right and so these are just simple things that everybody can do and that are good for your body and are and good for you know feeding and nourishing all the cells of your body then we can get into construction we'll just talk a little bit about construction because it's something that bamboo is known a lot for um, construction is something uh, that isn't being done a lot in the United States but it is this is one of the best ones for it, although there are a lot. Uh, Old Hamai is a structural bamboo. It is solid and about almost up to the first like couple of feet. And then after that, it has a really thick wall. So you can use this for um, tiki huts, any kind of structural projects that you want to do in your backyard. And then the smaller ones are really good for utilizing for trellises, for growing things in your garden, for projects. And then you can think of like little projects that you can do with them too. Uh, using bamboo in a structural and construction way is another great way to utilize a resource that you already have or that you might have access to that's in your area used to date all the different parts of bamboo to make extracts from. Uh, you can use the stems, you can use the leaves, you can use the inside of the calm, you can use the roots, I use the calm sheaths. I've made all different things. The biggest thing about bamboo I think to keep in mind is that when you're making an extract from bamboo it really needs that heat in order to be broken down. So if you're doing an infused oil or you're doing something like that you want to break down that cellular structure in some way um i tried a long time to make things raw from bamboo and that just didn't work out too well um, you can put it in a blender and infuse it with water and kind of masticate it that is breaking down that cellular structure through the actual physically breaking it down 
Uh, or you can do things like sun drying it. Sun dry it will break it down. Baking it will break it down. Boiling it will break it down. But it needs to be broken down in order for those nutrients to become more bioavailable to us. We are not uh, a hoof stock or a rudiment. So we cannot, we can't um, eat bamboo and get the nutrients from it as is because we don't have four stomachs that do the same thing as what I'm talking about. So utilizing it in that way, just know that if you're gonna play with it, it needs that breaking down of the cellular structure.